Hello everyone. Uh, it is the third and the last in the series of answer writing session. Though I have not gone into very detail of this, but I have talked in a relatively natural, very short uh, videos. Uh, in fact, I feel that there is no need to be very, very elaborate where each and every point is discussed. That's a kind of spoon feeding. Uh, in the introduction, we have talked about uh, how to begin an answer because beginning is generally a very very difficult task but once you are habituated and you have worked upon it properly then you can introduce any answer and you can begin with if, whenever you try to write an answer the biggest hurdle will be to start and once you have started very beautifully rationally relevantly then you can continue and there will be coherence in your answer and in the introduction we have talked about how the topic has impacted humans rather what is the importance of the topic with respect to humans and with respect to subject matter concerned so when we talk about introduction and when once you have introduced it beautifully then you come to body part and in the body part you talk about subject and predicate and you keep on talking and uh, correlating comparing that two topics we have taken several examples also in the conclusion, that's also equally very important part. When you write uh, exams like graduation or for something uh, relatively different, then body parts become far, far more important. But what I feel in civil services, conclusion and introduction is the most important part. Because most important parts in the sense that when you, when I compare students with others, that is where they are, they, I find them different. And because body parts, most, most of the answers who are in your competition will be roughly similar in terms of content. But once you have introduced it very beautifully, the body parts coherence and the continuity of the content will be very different from the rest, even if the content, uh, the crux of the content remains similar. So when you conclude beautifully that you have a very compact answer. And in the conclusion, you should always try to do things differently. Normally, in the conclusion, we talk about thus I prove, this is how it is. So that is a mathematical concept. Most of the engineers I have seen doing this. Because thus it is proven that continental drift theory has these problems. Thus is it proven, proven that parliamentary, uh, parliament have control over the executive. Bhaiya bahar nikal jao usse. Bohat ho gaya un sab cheezon ko. Mathematics ka A plus B ka whole square is equal to A square plus B square. Thus it is proven. No. That's a childish way to conclude anything. So, what is the requirement in the conclusion and how should you conclude an answer? So, let's talk about in terms of uh, the correlation between the introduction and conclusion. In the introduction, you talk about the importance of topic. How the continuity of the flow or the flow of thought would be there. Importance with respect to humans and with respect to the subject content subject matter suppose if you're writing economy so what is the contribution of the topic in economy polity uh, geography especially technical subjects like geography give you immense amount of scope to write a very good con introduction and from there you can have a flow of conclusion as well like here you have talked about you have already reflected that how earthquake is important the study of earthquake why should we study the earthquake we have taken example in introductory lecture uh, why so for example if you're writing an answer over infrastructure so what is the role of infrastructure in overall socio-economic transformation of a nation now when you write infrastructure in the introductory part you generally write about the economy but what about society look at if the infrastructure setup in a region is very very good the pace of infrastructure is very good the speed is very good obviously it increases the pace of the economy and anybody can write now you talk about social impact of, of, of infrastructure. So when infrastructure is very good, people commute very frequently. They interact a lot. When they are interacting, that basically increases cultural integration. Now, if you are writing about infrastructure, start with infrastructure plays a very, very important role in economic growth and development of a region. Especially, yeah, even after, even beyond that, or besides, the way you want to correlate it besides it also have huge impact on cultural integration which is vital for a diverse country like ours now you have correlated in different direction so that way when you have 
talked about the importance of the topic in the introductory like introduction itself now you come to the conclusion and the moment you conclude one thing there should be in your mind to begin the paragraph the impact of humans over the topic so how humans have impacted the topic modified the topic transformed the topic mostly if you see the impact of human over any topic you're talking about it will generally be negative so highlight that negative impact of the topic of humans over the topic once you have highlighted that now it comes to the suggestion part like there can be three four aspects what has been done thereafter depending upon the topic you will have the content what has been done then come to what what needs to be done so once you have uh, we are trying to highlight what has been done this generally will be from the institution part let's say for example if you are writing about infrastructure so what the government has done for the improvement of infrastructure let's say you're talking about let's say uh, suppose earthquake itself so what has been done so we have done a lot of things there are seismometer there are delineation of earthquake there are different uh, measures whatever has been taken for example if you're talking about empowerment of women so their family institution will also come into play for example parents have started realizing the importance of girls in education and all so what has been done when i say institution it does not necessarily mean public institution it can be private individual private institutions like family as well so what has been done highlight what needs to be done so what has been done is prim primarily associated with the institutional efforts taken in the direction to remove this negativity because you have started with a negative connotation that is you like for example if you're talking about temperature talk about global warming excessive interference of humans in the ecological aspect has deteriorated the condition and we are facing the wrath of global warming so what is the impact of if you are writing about forest then you can always talk about deforestation and devegetation and its consequences also now what needs to be done is basically a part of your suggestion where you suggest something that for example uh temperature and all if you if you are talking about temperature then you highlight that global efforts international efforts you can mention a little bit kyoto protocol and all and then uh you can go on to the governmental part and when you are talking about needs to be done then effective implementation further international cooperation energy exchange technology exchange whatever you want to talk and then you end up with a positive note always end up even howsoever pathetic question you have chosen to write over always end up with a positive note because that is one thing one uh, quality of administrator which all should always be there that is called optimism because if a person like you who is the leader who is the administrator if doesn't have optimism or becomes pessimist definitely it is not going to help the administration or the society several times if you can just recall for example at the and the midnights as a dm or as an sp you come you get a call and call of chaos your subordinates have called you sir bahut buri halat hai yahan pe then you need to be optimistic you need to be encouraging you need to be convincing suppose agar hum let's say suppose haryana ki baat karte hain haryana punjab ki baat hai female feticides ki baat karte hain khap panchayat ki baat karte hain very often we don't know the true uh reason behind that and we start blaming the elders that khap panchayat khap panchayat is a is a product is a effect not the cause so as an administrator when you understand these things optimism will always be there for example if you are writing about women empowerment obviously the condition is not encouraging in our country yet with the suggestions you have given with the steps has been taken if the further implementation continues things will be much much better in the future so there are four parts highlight the negative impact of humans what has been done what needs to be done and then the then the ending with a positive note about basically here 
you talk about how do you want to see the topic in the future. What is one thing? What is one thing you would like to bring change in that particular topic? And that will be the greatest creativity. Now, you might find it very difficult right now. Ki how can you write so many things in the concluding remarks? That is what you have to learn. So how can you conclude in 15 words, 20 words at the most? And you can give all these things. That is where you need to practice a lot. For example, if I am saying about earthquake, just think about, think over it, what one thing you would definitely like to, the change or the human should make a, a definite effort to bring that. And that will always be prediction of timing. Though right now it might feel immature when you are thinking about that, gosh, we could have predicted the timing of the earthquake, we can save millions of life, millions of property. So that disaster management can become very easy. So here, how do you see the topic in the future? So definitely the international efforts must be in the direction so that the timing can be ascertained or predicted easily. So research should be done in that direction. Now the hair aspect, like for example, if you're talking about the temperature, you highlight global warming. You talk a little bit about Kyoto Protocol, though various measures at national and international efforts, various efforts uh, have been taken. For example, Kyoto Protocol and all you give such an example, comma, comma. Then you come, however, it is not sufficient unless until international efforts are properly given. But with the concerned citizens, individuals, civil society and international national international institution we are definitely going to fight it out so that is how all the four parts can be brought into let's say 10 15 words that will take a lot of time that needs a lot of practice in mind initially what i told in the beginning that one of the biggest myths is that you should always have pen and paper uh, while writing an answer that is not there you can write answers while walking you can write answers while talking you can write answers while maybe uh, sipping a cup of tea we just think an answer out of blue may not be relevant to upsc doesn't matter you develop your flight of imagination once you have imagined once you can think once you, once you can reach at that level you can definitely create very fascinating conclusion introduction and even the body parts for example if you are going walking on the road you see something which is unusual think about it Take your flight of imagination, go into the reasons behind that. And the moment you go into the reasons behind, I have given several examples in my myths and reality of UPSC in the previous videos. That <clears throat> what is the perceived notion about a particular act and what is the actual reality behind it. The perception generally differs. The perception is basically structured opinion. Whereas the reason or the rationale behind it might be totally, totally different. So reach into that reason and try to reach even maybe unproductive topic which might not be directly relevant directly related with upsc preparation but the moment you develop your ability to think beyond the conventional norm you are actually preparing for upsc even if the topic is not mentioned in the syllabus so that ways when you try on different thing which you have not read when you try on different thing which you have just experienced you can go through it and bring creativity at the highest possible level. Like, uh, for example, you can take several examples here itself. You might think that uh, it is very, very difficult to bring all these four stairs and the uh, conclusion itself may be huge. In the beginning itself, I have told that not more than 10% or roughly around 10% of the word limit should be devoted to conclusion. In that word limit, you have tremendous amount of scope to write almost all the areas if you cannot write start with this and club these two in one and then end with a positive note especially especially when you are uh, when the topic is negative always end up with a positive note because then you are telling examiner that look i am an optimist i'm not a pessimist let's say suppose uh, if you're talk talking about election commission in the recent election you have seen that the things were not very encouraging 
as far as the role of election commission is concerned and if you get a question definitely end with a positive note that our institution is not one year or five year young it has been established over the period like you give the, that feeling and it has since it is very long and deep rooted it can't be eroded so easily yes barring few exceptions sometimes we are humans we do commit some mistakes but the the people of the country is strong enough to bring it back so that is the positive that is the positive attitude that's what we mean by optimism and when you optim when you are optimistic you are always surrounded by with positive energy and you are telling the examiner that look even in the worst of the conditions i'll find myself some way out as an administrator as an ips as an ies and always uh, try to write diplomatically when you write something don't write in absolute terms always be diplomatic that this is how it should be there for example that diplomacy is also one of the most important characteristics of administrator and like for example if you are uh, uh, representing our country in somewhere at international plate, uh, platform you might come across some let's say pakistani ambassador and you have to shake hand and you might uh, be forced to appreciate ki, yes well done man you have done good thing except barring dropping bombs in our country but that will be there inside yet you will shake hand and you will smile at him this is what you call diplomacy so several traits of administrator is reflected through answer remember it is not about the content remember it is not about the language it is always about reflection of administrative skills in your answer and that is why introduction has to be very very important introduction has to be very very creative and that's where introduction body parts and conclusion should be compacted in that that in such a way that it generates an impression ki yes this is the guy who is fit to be to administer administer our country who is fit to be a part of sales services in our country and you can take your level with least amount of information i'm telling you at the maximum level keep on subscribing my channel and uh, please like it thank you god bless you all